Aries season. Man. <laughs> Goddamn Aries season. Pisces season is just always a lot. I always have very weird dreams during Pisces season. Did I tell you about my weird stress dreams I had? Uh, I no, but I had. I've had a lot of dreams during Pisces season that were all very upsetting. <laughs> So, so you tell me about yours. Um, so I told male coworker about it, and he was like, "What the fuck does that mean?" Because we always look up. He he doesn't believe in that shit, but I always like psychoanalyze dreams and like our student uh, shelver. Yes, like I'll look up what their dreams are, and so um, I like looked it up, <laughs> and like I got it was the same stress dream. I kept having it over and over, and it was one of those ones where it's like. You fall asleep and the dream starts, and then you scare yourself awake, and then you go to sleep mm-hmm. and like the dream starts no. over again. That sounds terrible. And so I was like driving on the highway, and it's a highway I drive on all the time, and I was like speeding down the road. Okay. And like <clears throat> all of a sudden, like it's not that I was distracted or like doing anything, like I was just paying attention, and like the dream is like five seconds long. So I'm speeding down the highway, and then all of a sudden, there's this ar- orange car. I almost said orange. That's bad. Orange. This orange car parked sideways across the lane in front of me, and I go to slam into it. And just as I'm about to hit it, I scared myself away. Oh, my God. What and does that mean? I don't. Okay, so hold on. So then I w- fell asleep again, and immediately, same thing, like same section of highway, speeding down the road, same lane, and this time, dead birds were falling out of the sky, and I was driving <laughs> around them. <laughs> And it just, I kept just having like that same dream, but with different shit. And so I looked it up and it was like, well, if you're like getting in an accident on the highway, it feels like you don't have control over some aspect of your life. Okay. But orange is generally considered like a sign of happiness. So I don't know if it's like you're going to crash into happiness or if like you are like fucking up your life and destroying your chance at happiness. Well, no, because the happiness appears in your dream, so it's almost like you have a chance at happiness, but it... But I'm hitting it. I'm destroying but it. You, but you are feeling, because you were speeding down the highway, which I would almost, if it's the highway that you take for, like, school or work, mm-hmm. like, that, it, it represents a, sto- a a point of stress in your life. Mm-hmm. And so maybe this happiness is essentially, this happiness essentially is going to ruin your routine right like it's it's in the middle of your and maybe this is your brain's way of being like i'm afraid of this happiness and and like kind of headlong diving into it because i kind of have this routine worked out right now maybe i'm just taking it because it's like an obstacle and i'm like destroying it i'm taking it as not like a good thing i'm taking it as like something i do is going to wreck that i well i don't i well i guess that's we've talked about i just talked about this with male co-worker and i said i am like an optimist yeah and so i take it as like you have a chance of like you know you're a safe driver and even though you're speeding down the road this is like part of your routine if the car was parked next to you and driving alongside it, you wouldn't be hitting the car. Like the car, like this is like a chance opportunity or a chance thing happening. And so it's almost like you you are coming upon it by accident and you also don't get to see what happens because you wake up before you like... I mean, it's obvious that I hit it. Like where the right. car is and like how close it was to the windshield, like that's that, like it is obvious what was going to happen in the right. dream. But you still didn't see what happened like you wake up before that happens yeah and then but then also just the fact that like the next one was like dead birds and that's like that's a sign of danger and an ill omen that something bad is happening it's coming it's you're trying it's trying to prepare you and i'm like but then is it good that i don't actually run them over i'm like passing through them because i'm like swerving around them because something else said if there's like if somebody's like I had a dream I was walking across like my whole yard was filled with dead birds but I was walking across them and then they were like well that means that like you're going to overcome the danger so I'm like so like what what is what the fuck so like those were my stress <laughs> dreams that I kept having and I was like I don't know I don't know what this is it's not good whatever it is I yeah I had a dream that my next door neighbors were getting a divorce. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, uh, and it was one of those dreams that felt very, very realistic. 
And I'm just like, why? Why am I having this dream? And I didn't look it up because I was like, it's just really, really weird that I'm having this dream. Um, I don't like it. I And I texted my sibling and I said, I like Pisces season is messing me up. Mm. And then I had most recently I had a. Uh, I had a dream that a wrestler I really liked had a specific brand of donuts that they physically made and they were manufactured, like they handmade these donuts and like I bought them and I went to go eat them. I think I brought them to work and somebody else ate them instead of me <laughs> and I was super upset and then I think I went to the wrestler to explain like, hey, somebody ate the donuts that I bought from you and I was just trying to support you. And then there was like a weird tension between me and the wrestler. And I was like, I'm attracted to you, but also like you're hitting on me. I was just going to ask, I was like, what kind of tension? <laughs> and they were roommates. And they were roommates. <laughs> uh, and he goes to blatantly hit on me and I'm like, but I'm married. <laughs> like you can't. And then somebody else was like, well, I know you had this bad experience. Do you want these donuts instead? I'm like, no, I just want the donuts that I bought. And like, I, it was a lot. It was a lot. And um, my uh, <laughs> my sibling said, uh, to see a donut in your dream represents the self. It suggests that you may be feeling lost and trying to find yourself and your purpose in life. Alternatively, it refers to growth development and uh, nutrients you are not yet completely hold and so they suggested is someone snatching an opportunity from for growth from you and I said I don't know maybe I don't know I was like what a weird dream to have but I'm like also I feel like queen of like really odd dreams that pull from very specific things in real life um so I don't know I definitely know I watched like Smackdown <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, that was like one of the last wrestlers I saw before I had the dream. So I'm like, well, there's that connection, but I'm not sure why donuts played a part in it. I was like, maybe I just got a lot of stuff on my mind and a lot of experiences with a lot of experiences at work with donuts, particularly. Yeah. I mean, you were talking about getting donuts the other day, yeah. so yeah. that's probably where that came from. I just, I... I this is really funny too because I was talking about these these dreams with somebody else and like as I was texting it um my phone autocorrected I was like what is dreams are such a scam like it's just weird little movies that your brain plays while you're asleep and like you have to figure out what it means and my phone autocorrected movies to knives and I was like <laughs> mm, fitting but also what have I been teaching you autocorrect <laughs> like I feel like um, the vibe is what I meant, but also not weird little knives that your brain plays while you're sleeping. All right, we'll see. Airy season. I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we got a lot of squirrely people out and about and coming out of the woodwork. But I'm hoping that there's just more direct. I know we're supposed to have like a stupid Mercury in retrograde. We also have an eclipse and an eclipse. But I'm just hoping for some more things to like come to light, air out the laundry, I whatever, just need, whatever. Like, I mean, there's like a lot of things I need in my life to be fixed, but there's like one specific situation that we were just talking about recently that yeah. I just need some clarity. <laughs> you and me both. I mean, you more so than me, but like I again am just you're, you're WTF, mate. Yeah, you're you're I'm your sideline cheerleader. Like I just want you to be happy, but I also I'm like just fix it. <laughs> I can't. It's you, out well, of you my control. Can, uh, but I'm talking to the other person. It's out of my control. Fix it. <laughs> anyway. Welcome to the Lake Erie Library. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like my life would be so much better if I could just run naked on a bridge in front of a police car like this photo. Look at his little tushy. It's so um, cute. A lot of artists depict them that way <laughs> with like a real badonkadonk. Caked up. Did you see? Yes, you did because we shared it. That pe Somebody keeps putting quarters in Mothman's butt on yeah. the statue. There's a statue of Mothman in West Virginia. It's silver. It's quite lovely. I'd we like talked to see about it. it in our Mothman episode. Way back. But he is caked 
up. He's got quite a butt on him, and people keep sticking cake, quarters. Cake, 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 cake. <laughs> in the crack of his butt. <laughs> Sometimes you can't help it. It's like, a, oh, God, like, I'm going to say it because it's funny, but this is not what I meant. You know, like, when you have something in your mouth and your tongue keeps going and poking it? <laughs> Like, you can't help it. Your tongue's like, what is that? What's going on? I think, like, it's an impulse thing. Like, you see a caked up booty and you got to, like, stick something in it. Stop. 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 Oh, God. I knew as soon as my brain went to, like, tongue from caked up Mothman that it was going to be the most unhinged thing that came out of my mouth. It's, yeah. We're, like, explicitly rated. (laughs) because of our cusses yeah and now they're gonna be like they're so dirty in the lake Erie library i think i forgot like the last episode we posted to change it to explicit so (laughs) i'll have to go in and fix that sometimes i remember sometimes i don't we um we need to check on apple podcasts too because a while ago we got an email about something and then i forgot to follow up on it because i'm me and, and I haven't checked the, the I, um, email. As soon as like my eyes are off it, I forget, which is why I like text people like really insane, disconnected things in one text message because if I don't, I will forget about it. But I know they just updated their service where like it automatically transcribes podcasts now, which oh, is awesome. Yeah. Like that's great accessibility because now people who need subtitles and transcripts, like it's automatically there and like the content creators don't have to go and type up a separate They're gonna transcript. They're going to have so much fun it. with me pronouncing things incorrectly. Yeah, but I mean, the, like, I feel like it's probably not perfect transcription, mm-hmm. but I, it is better than not having it. And I like that that is, I mean, I'm all about accessibility. Like right. my career change deals with that. So right. I, I'm like really happy about it. But I think maybe it was something tied in with that. So we should probably check on that okay and just make sure that apple podcasts are working the way they should so if you listen to us on apple podcasts and like you've experienced something weird hopefully we've checked on it by the time you hear this episode but if if there's like something strange like please let us know because we want you to be able to get your podcasts where you want to get them from i know google play is going away soon too it, like it's april of this oh, i thought it went away already no april of this year is when it's done and they're moving it all over to youtube so i mean we kept saying that we were going to maybe start a tiktok but i think tiktok's getting banned for real so oh, that God. saved us some problems <laughs> We don't is have to it, worry about is doing it. Have they officially decided? I think they voted to get rid of it. I think it passed. Oh, my God. Like, it's, they're going to have to, like, it, the, now the thing is, like, they have to either sell it so it's no longer owned by China, mm-hmm. a Chinese company. I, I said China. It's no longer owned by China. Jesus. Um, there's like a, a, they're, they're essentially like delivering an ultimatum where it's like sell it to a U.S. company or nobody in the U.S. can use your platform anymore. I, I'm assuming we're a good chunk of their users. Probably. Okay. So. This is like there's not much incentive for that, but. Yeah. I mean, really like, you know, just to get on my like total government conspiracy soapbox for three seconds, it's like for sure just to like. They're like, we're going to push this through right now so everyone else stops bothering us about these other things that are more important that are, like, timely. Yeah. So we're going to really focus and crack down on TikTok instead of those other things, you know, like ceasefires or anything else. You know, people getting murdered and going missing in Tennessee or (sighs) any other number of atrocities that have been committed in our country recently. So... By all means, let's worry about TikTok. <laughs> Fight stepping. The real enemy. Stepping off my soapbox. <laughs> Anyways, so today... it's I mean, it's good that I just brought up conspiracies yes. and random shit. Uh, today, we're going to talk about some cryptids. This is what we're calling a mini-sode. So uh, rather than spending hours and hours, not hours and hours, but like over an hour talking about cryptids um and mashing them all together we want to give each cryptid its own little love letter mothman has a chunky backstory so it's very easy to spend an hour or two talking about them him her them we don't know them 
them. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at some pictures. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we want to give each kind of uh, Ohio cryptid credit where credit is due. And today we decided we're going down south. We're going to talk about the Loveland Frog. Um, who is now the official mascot, as of 2023, the official mascot of Loveland, Ohio. That's amazing. I referred to him as the Loveland Frog Fella about 15 <laughs> minutes ago, so <laughs> good for uh, you. But I will say, across <laughs> lots of art, the Loveland Frog is quite, as you were saying, caked up. It has quite that a booty. booty though. <laughs> quite a booty on him. He's just a little guy, too. He's like only four He's foot four tall. Four foot, yeah. So it's like, I don't know, just imagining someone four foot tall with like a booty that don't quit. I, I feel like if I say this, it's insensitive, so I'm not going to. Oh, I was just was thinking about Warwick Davis. I was thinking about Peter Dinklage because like he's good looking. <gasps> oh, so Peter like, what Dinklage if he is has, like, so hot. What if he has like a, a booty that we don't know about, that we just haven't seen? Maybe. Maybe. I'm listen. That is not to say that he is He's the Loveland Frog, but Peter Dinklage has sexy arms. Oh yeah, he's like jacked. Yeah, right? yeah. Listen, I would teary in that Lannister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how did we get so horny in this us <laughs> to begin with? Like, what is happening? It's just, it's just my nature. <laughs> I think I got over my bad feelings that I had when I got here today, and it was just like, well, we're just going to repress feeling bad. What's the next thing she feels? <laughs> ah, horny. All oh right. Oh, my God. Let it all out. I did also look at that little frog feller, and his <laughs> booty did something for me. I mean, like, this one, he's like, ah, look at this. It's, like, so coy. It's, like, a little, like, over the shoulder. <laughs> Like, oh, hello, I was just crossing the road, didn't see you there. I know I'm not wearing clothes. <laughs> so, Funny of you to notice. So before we get into the description, let's just kind of talk about, um, so the Loveland Frog, for those of you who have never heard of the Loveland Frog before, is described as a humanoid frog standing about four feet tall and starting like the the legend of the Loveland frog started in like the 50s. Mm -hmm. I think bi bipedal is an important and bipedal, descriptor. yes. It's like um, walking on two legs instead of four. Yes. So the first kind of legend of this arose actually with like a so it goes, uh a businessman was driving out and about in Loveland and it's dark and he is crossing this bridge and he sees not one, not two, but three of these like frog people hopping on and around. And at one point, the legend says that the one had like a wand holding it over its head mm. and like sparks were shooting out of the wand. Some people tried to attribute and say that the Loveland frog was alien in nature and is not from this world. So this businessman was a reputable businessman said, hey, I saw these like weird frog people <laughs> driving down the road and this legend was kind of born and it was passed on like orally from like, you know, uh, generation to generation until 1972, a policeman sees a four foot tall humanoid creature crossing the bridge and this place was very reputable. Like they stopped, it was pitch dark, but they had their headlights on and the humanoid frog man was like right in front of his car. So he was like on fours. He gets up, he stands up, he puts one leg over the guardrail and then like, is like, all right, I'm leaving. To be fair, if I was just minding my own business and the popo rolled up, I also would stand up and slowly climb over the guardrail to get away. So I just want to, the guy who originally saw him, is that Honeycutt? Robert Honeycutt? Yes. What a good last name. It's a good name. Also, just like a perfect name for like, oh, did you hear about old Mr. Honeycutt? He thinks he saw a frog man. <laughs> like on uh, Welcome to Night Vale. Oh. They, they're yeah. always like, um, what is his name? 
No, I can't remember. They always like refer to this guy and they're like, so and so, you know, the farmer. Like there's one farmer in all of Night Vale right. and he's always got like a conspiracy theory. But there's a drawing by John Mazaros of these three Loveland frogs that Honeycutt thought he saw, complete with like wand with sparks flying out of it. And it looks like one of those old, like, um, like when you had the black wax oh, yeah, pages yeah, and yeah. you scratched a picture into it with a yeah. stick. I fucking love it. But also, like, these frogs are definitely witches, right? Like, I that mean, looks like a coven. It looks meeting. like a coven, yeah. And then you have a little spark. They, so the reason they thought that it no was No wonder alien, I took one look at it and was immediately, like, bewitched and besotted. Like, that's a witch frog. <laughs> Are we trying to say that the Loveland frog is like, uh, like a shifter? I don't know what I'm saying, but I believe. <laughs> scholar, <laughs> scholar, scholar, Jesus, scholar, scholar. <laughs> scholar it's me, <laughs> Molly. <laughs> uh, X File gang, where are you at? I want to retrieve. <laughs> oh, stupid. <laughs> Oh, we're just getting silly up in here. Uh, right. So, yeah. So, the the police file a report, and they're like, okay, this is kind of like in the legend, right? So, it's not until 2016 that another cop comes out of the woodwork, and he says, hey, like, two weeks or th- like a short time after the guy initially, the first policeman saw uh, this um, frog... I, too, was out on the same road and saw the same creature, and I shot it, (laughs) and I killed it, and then he immediately put it in the trunk of his car, and they discover and say that the Loveland frog is actually an iguana, Mm -hmm. and it was an iguana that was apparently tailless, and they think it was an escaped, like, pet. I did look up, because I was like... No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. And I was like, how big are iguanas? They get big. They apparently, on average, are between four and six feet. Yeah. But that's including the tail. So, and I was like, the tail's usually about as long because that's how tails work. Um, Here's so the thing, though. I'm like, I have big? been, I have been very close to wild iguanas before. Like in Puerto Rico, they are everywhere. And they move so fast. And they like also in remembering things, like when something startles you, like your brain always remembers things as bigger than they right, actually are. Right. So like I would also be like totally buy it. Even without a tail, I would be like, yeah, that thing's that sucker's four feet. But like they get big. We're not talking like your kids little keep it in an aquarium iguana. Like they get big. And I guess Loveland, so it's, it's in Southern Ohio. Their climate in Southern Ohio is a little bit different than like other, yeah, like Northern Ohio has definitely more extreme temperature differences. And, you know, this is like the 50s and 70s, so there might have been a different also, climate back then. Well, it's also March. Right. So, like, now, like, we just had snow in March. Right. Which is not unusual. I remember, like, having snow in April right. as a kid. But, like... When my tater tot was born, it was snowing out. Yeah. Like, March is generally considered, like, the start of spring. And if this iguana did escape from someone, like, it doesn't necessarily have to have been out surviving for very long that's true like when it gets cold like a, I, I remember them in florida too like they live up in trees and it gets like cold out and their bodies can't like handle it and they like fall out of the trees and they're like stunned essentially like they can't move because their little iguana bodies are like i can't regulate because i'm cold-blooded and so like it you know I all of this tracks in my brain is what I'm saying. Like it probably was not so cold that it couldn't have survived outside. I just, that it could have been it that. Lift its leg for the first policeman, and they got a long right. Reach. But it it stood up. 
I don't know. I just have questions. So, like, have you ever really watched how lizards move? Like, if it had its, like, front, if it was trying to go over, because it couldn't go under for whatever reason, and it was climbing it's too, it's up. too chunky. <laughs> it, like, could have been, like, pulling itself up, and then their legs are, like, like behind, like, the way they move. I guess I have seen, I, I always forget, and I don't know why I forget, because I think they're super cool. That like marine iguanas are a thing, and mm-hmm. they look like just mini Godzillas. And I'm like, I just so badly want to go to the Galapagos Islands and vibe with some marine iguanas and like sunbathe with them and their like eight million color scales and stuff like that. But they they do kind of sit upright and stuff like that. And when they're swimming in the water, they look kind of like otters. Mm. And they like stand up because, as I said, they look like little mini Godzillas going through the water. So it's just, yeah, like I guess it's fair. Even tail, I don't know. I just, I guess I need to picture it without a tail too. Um, oh, that guy, he's just enjoying that leaf. He is. Like, get in my mouth. Um. So yeah, but I guess this, but then it's like, where did this first trio of frogmen come from? <laughs> The Burt Reynolds of iguanas. <laughs> um, Let me tell you about my scales. Right. <laughs> um. So I don't know. I just. I guess that's what I have questions about. Is how how have we gotten these? Gen- like I know how oral traditions work and stuff, and I know how local legends work. Obviously, like we have heard our share of them in this part of Ohio. The question is, is like, how did we get the trio to? the policeman going oh it's just an iguana well that also i saw it attached to that that he was like oh like i'm just gonna like exaggerate the story to make my buddy not seem so cuckoo banana crackers like i got your back pal and so yeah i guess too the issue is is once they did bring this to like the attention of the media the media failed to report that it was an iguana so the legend just kind of lived on to the point where now, like, Loveland's very much... Dimbr- I feel like that's kind of the nice thing is with the rise of internet culture and, like, the love of, like, cryptids, Loveland has kind of taken back, like, we're not weird that we have, like, a cryptid here. Like, we're going to have a whole festival dedicated to... Uh, yeah, he's a terrifying, caked-up giant frog man, but he's our terrifying, caked-up giant frog yeah. man. And he's just vibing. Like, there's nothing, like... It's it's not like Mothman where it's like we've had so many sightings that are malicious and we don't know what's happening. I'm just picturing that the Kermit the Frog oh. gif where he's like dancing <laughs> and that like boo doo 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 <laughs> song, just vibing. You, you know, he's just he's just hanging out in the swamps. Like I get it. Like what else are you gonna do? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some people have attributed it to aliens. Some people are like, it's just a giant frog. And the police say that it was an iguana that was mistaken. I do, iguanas do live a long time. So I'm like, it's they not do. like, it would not be unheard of that maybe it was multiple ones. I'm just like, how did it survive so long in the Ohio wilderness? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's got like a little home. But it doesn't matter because the second policeman just shot it. Straight up. Very American of him. Shoot first. Ask questions never. I will refrain from commenting. I already got on my soapbox yeah. once. Yeah, I, I just... It's really unfortunate that <laughs> that happened. But yeah. I do think it's cool. Like, the they just started the Loveland Frog Festival uh, like yeah, two years you, ago. Yeah, you, like, sent me a thing and we're like, can you go to this? I was like, I work. <laughs> That's your day off. Yeah. And I did not go because I, I didn't feel like driving Mm -hmm. all the way there maybe next year maybe next year i it was i just discovered it this year hey loveland have us come to your festival to talk about weird ohio stuff we can do that but pay us please at least our gas yes um but yeah they just had it this year it was in march of this year um Trying to see what else they they have vendors there. They have arts, crafts, and merchandise. They have speakers presenting their research, um, and then they have the Pied Piper of Loveland leading a parade of costume participants. And then uh, they also had circus sideshows providing entertainment. It sounds like a good time. It sounds fun. I would like to know what their panelists were talking about. 
Hold on. What Speakers. do you think Loveland Frogman's glute workout is like? <laughs> I think he does squats. I think he does Pilates. Discuss. I did just read recently that they scientists are finally like, uh, instead of doing like a bunch of cardio to lower your heart rate, it's actually better to do strength training, but like wall squats, like that type and planks, like that sustained like body weight training that's awful, but <laughs> it's like a low f- form of torture. But I was like, you know what? I did feel better. I guess. I guess, scientist, you're correct. Because I did feel better when I was doing... I finally watched a video and I don't know. I think I've been doing squats wrong this entire time. And <laughs> Why uh, didn't you ask me? I would have shown you. I, it just wasn't clicking in my brain. And then I finally watched this workout video and the guy's like, just think about doing it like you're sitting down in a chair and how what muscles you use. And I'm like, I've been using my knees this entire time. No, the way that I learned how to properly do squats was that we literally would like be next to a bench and you just had to like gently like lower your butt down to touch the edge and then stand back up again and then like depending on what muscles you're trying to work like you put your feet in different positions uh so apparently they had a podcaster who talks about cryptozoology ufology uh they had another ufologist there um they also had a librarian there who uh, is the author of the Encyclopedia of Parapsychology. Oh, and James Willis was there, of course. Oh, your guy. That's my boy. You let him out of the basement. <laughs> no, James, we're not talking to you right now. Get back in the closet. <laughs> go go back in the ghoul door. You're not allowed out. I, that would be amazing if he could fit through that. It's Tell a small door. Tell Slender Man that dinner is at seven. <laughs> And then they also had a professor, it looks like, there who t- talks about, like, the different mounds in Ohio. Mm-hmm. So they had, like, a little bit of everything there, which is pretty cool. Uh, a lot of paranormal researchers and stuff. But, like, yeah, invite us there. We'll come. We'll happy. We, we, we got true crime, too. And other stuff. <laughs> uh, happy to, to be of service. But we could also just go to vibe there. That would be okay, too. Yeah. I could go and do the Kermit the Frog dance <laughs> and sing that song. Are you going to wear wait, Are you gonna wear Kermit the Frog outfit? I might. <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. Uh, <laughs> I'll definitely get one of those padded butt things, too. Oh, my God. So that I look right. I love this picture. Is like I want to get this tattooed on my body. Oh, my God. Um, it is a drawing. John... Irwin, who had an encounter in 1993, drew <laughs> this picture. So, it, it, where it's discussed, they're they're discussing whether or not this could have possibly have been a deer that somebody saw, and they're discussing how, like, from certain angles, like deer can kind of look like weird people, st- like humans standing <laughs> in two feet. And I've I've witnessed this before because I saw this is like this sounds like the most folksy thing ever. But I saw a deer pooping on the side of the highway and it was like sort of squatting. And I was like, I've never seen a deer move like that before. Like, I didn't know that they did that. Yeah, I guess I didn't know either. But and it looked like this. Like, it looks like somebody's about to twerk like a Tina Belcher twerk. (laughs) But it's like a deer head and like their legs are like close in the front and wide in the back and so i was just like does a deer shit on the side of the highway who knows uh i will say okay so looking at this uh incident (laughs) further um the officer that shot the frogman did it on saint patrick's day so it does tie into march (laughs) this was all wrapped up in march of the 72 i believe yeah March of 72. And so after he shot the uh, frogman, he thought the lump was roadkill and exited his car to clear it from the road. The lump. How fucking rude. Oh, yeah. The lump jumped at Matthews. It dashed it to the guardrail and scrambled underneath, keeping eye contact with Matthews the entire time. Good. Sh- shame him. And that was after he hit it. And then he shot. He came out. Then he drew his revolver and took a shot. It stopped. The creature stopped moving. 
and then he put it in the trunk of his car to show Officer Shockey, who was the officer that first discovered it in 1972. Shockey. About th- he said it was a large iguana, three and to three and a half feet long, difficult to identify because it was missing its tail. And I guess they theorize that the iguana was keeping warm from the pipes leading away from a boot factory nearby its ovens. Mm. So, interesting. Um, there, There is another theory that this creature comes from a parallel like timeline of Earth to ours. Have you heard that? No. Go on. So... There's a theory that this could be the Squamazoic. So there's these like bipedal reptile-like creatures, um, which this would also tie in with carrying like a mechanical device that's making sparks, Mm -hmm. is that if parallel universes and time travel exist, then in this parallel Earth, where the Squamazoic live, there could be these like l- humanoid lizards that might look like iguanas a little bit, that might be tailless, that might walk on two legs. They could have evolved to a point where they're from a future. Okay. A future in their timeline that is parallel to us, and they could have like crossed over because they learned how to time travel and are traveling to 20th century Ohio as part of like an exploratory or invasive mission and then they're just like essentially popping back and forth through interdimensionary travel oh and and Ohio of all places Uh uh-huh the swamps of Ohio yeah, so maybe that is what's happening is like maybe the like multiverse theory is real and Ohio is just like the easiest point to jump timelines or something. That's why there's so much weird stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would there was some like TV show that alluded that we had like a lot of ley lines or something mm-hmm. in Ohio. So maybe we do have like some sort of weird maybe we really are the heart of it all <laughs> and we have some sort of like energy going on maybe so yeah i guess they're this this article i'm reading is like why do people love the loveland frog so much and they said it's emblematic of the watersheds and wetlands that make up ohio's backyard um we have some of the most abundant plant biodiversity in the u.s uh containing 32,950 acres of national parks i did not know that that's impressive I don't, they're saying that his history is as alluring. I feel like it's not as alluring. It doesn't have as meaty of a backstory. But even if it is an iguana, like, again, we have that original story. And it seems to happen every, like, 20 years or so. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, I'm just very curious. Like, if we went down the Loveland, like, what are the legends today? I would like to... I also wonder, we'll like, like what's... <laughs> right. I also wonder what, like culturally like what's happening in these times because like when the first sighting happened like creature from the black lagoon yes. was like a fresh story in everyone's mind right 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 and then there was like some kids in like 2016 who were playing pokemon go right which is literally a pocket monster right so like what are we doing that we're like refreshing this idea in our in our collective minds and then people are seeing it. Uh, you know what I mean? Really funny. I just was reading a tweet today about how Guillermo del Toro for Shape of Water, Guillermo. Guillermo was talking about how he tested the makeup and stuff of the creature from the Shape of Water. Weird that you're tying this back in when I was sexually harassing the Loveland Frogman earlier. And said, I literally need to make this monster sexy so that I know that he looks bangable, essentially. (laughs) (laughs) And Guillermo del Toro is buffalo billing the monster. He's like, could you fuck me? Why fuck me? (laughs) And he did this because he's like, the story really hinges on the believability that this monster can fuck. <laughs> and and 
They said inspiration was obviously Creature of the Black Lagoon, but then they also said that that story is really based off of Beauty and the Beast, mm. which is also another story with about Disney monster fucking. about monster fuck like there's people- monster killers or monster fuckers and people <laughs> let's be real there's like a very weird contingency on the internet who are like beast is way more attractive than his human it's counterpart true. sorry dan stevens <laughs> well i think dan stevens as a prince is attractive He's very more attractive. so than his beast prosthetics and, yes. and cgi but animated beast way more fuckable than adam <laughs> adam looked like prince adam looked like fabio like he was not cute yeah they did him a disservice it was like in in order of fuckability in beauty and the beast <laughs> this is happening right now reverse <laughs> reverse order reverse order we're gonna go now I'm considering my rankings and having some weird insight into myself. Okay. Um, reverse order. I'm going to say Gaston is at the bottom, but still fuckable. But like it would be a, a hate situation. Like well, I would not. I It would. All oh, right. This is getting too risque. It would it would be fun while it happened. And then I would like take a, a crying game shower afterwards because I would feel <laughs> like, what did I do? Oh, um, then you go one up from that and it's beast. Right. Okay. It's the beast super hot he's a big like looming presence all right he's got a library that's he's nice. got a library he would it, cook he, well he wouldn't cook you but he'd feed you dinner and mm-hmm. it would be a nice dinner with a show right but the most fuckable character in that movie is lumiere am i right <laughs> Like I'm not wrong in You're thinking this, about right? As a candelabra. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. He is the Riz Master. He is the Riz Master. My God, he would just look at you and be like, Poof. "Hello," <laughs> and you'd be like, "Done." Where Where do you want this to happen? I did like Ewan McGregor as Lumiere. I was like, I'm okay with that. He's like, I don't know if it's because he's French. Or if it's because he's oh, like, oh, he's like so like charismatic, or if it's because he's a showman, or if it's because he's slightly phallic shaped. I don't know what it is, but he is clearly the hottest character in that movie. Oh, we took a very. You're making me push my hat off, and and and, and he's like, you know, he fucks because he and the feather duster maid are constantly like <laughs> yes. popping out of like closets and stuff yes, together. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And then somehow I think the wardrobe also fits into this, but she is like the opposite end of like the sexual attraction spectrum where it's like she definitely fucks, but like it is like the the like stereotype of like, what do lesbians do on a second date? Bring the U-Haul. Like she would like she would for sure like take care of you <laughs> good god and i think the loveland frog man is on par with lumiere no oh, okay well maybe with beast somewhere between beast and gaston i think if you had to rank cryptids like mothman and outranks the loveland frogman but it's because he's got wings He's caked up. He's got wings. He's something he's, about those eyes. He's helpful, right? He's mysterious. <laughs> God. We could kiss in the lamp section of IKEA. Uh, being really Midwestern, I was just telling my husband as we were driving around uh, and we passed the Menards, I said, you know. I get why they got their lighting section up front, but I said, I just want to go in there and look at that section because it looks so alluring. And then I was like, I, what just came out of my mouth that is the peak Midwestern. Well, to tag team on that, I used to drive like over an hour to get to a Menards before we had one near us. So I get it. And I was like, it's just so alluring. Like the lighting section is just it's so inviting. Like I feel like I need to come in there. This cat like <laughs> reflexes. I just caught my phone. So yeah, Loveland Frog, we appreciate you. And I appreciate the oral tradition that has lived on. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> We're 
uh, we gotta wrap this up. There's too much horny. Call me Loveland Frogman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess I just appreciate the the traditions and the stories that have lived on past like these very small incidences and whether or not you really were an iguana or if you're something otherworldly that comes from a different parallel universe. I respect that and I would like to make an effort to go to the Loveland Frog Festival next year. Let's go. Okay. I'm not getting any younger. Okay. We'll gonna book find it. myself a partner. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna book an Airbnb. <laughs> we're gonna make this a thing. Just make sure it has two rooms. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna I'm inevitably gonna have to bring like my tater tot to this festival. So like say hello to Uncle Frogman, yeah. Tater Tot. <laughs> What's that? Mara! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ah. They'll be a year older by then. They're much bigger vocabulary. Oh, you're right. Indubitably, sir. It is grand to meet you. I am quite enchanted. (laughs) Oh, well, thank you guys for joining us on this wonderfully weird and strange journey today. And uh, thank you again to our spooky sponsor. Thank you, spooky sponsor. Sorry, you just had to listen to me say that about the frog man. (laughs) Honestly, they probably... They probably laughed. I'm sure they did. (laughs) Um, And yeah, uh, join us next time, next week, for another mini episode where we discuss another cryptid of Ohio. So stay spooky, friends. Bye.